But the Gata Chako, the guy, if you know, uh, after the genocide, there were so many people in jail that the government restored an old form of traditional justice in Rwanda to try all the people uh, suspected of genocide. And uh, Gabriel was tried in his absence, and I, I got the minutes yeah, handwritten in Kinawanda of the, the, the trial. And one of the participants mentioned this book. And I, I was intrigued. Eventually, I found it. Right. And I wish I could go through it. I won't because the time is short. But I would like to say um, it's extremely interesting because it's a fresh testimony of a survivor who tried, let me say, give you the title, Green Grapes for Irritated Teeth. It's actually a quote from um, Ezekiel chapter 18. The subtitle, Cry Against the Black Nazi in Rwanda. So if somebody is in the middle of an enormous grief, enormous emotion, and he wants to testify, he wants to write. And he, he was a sort of academic. He's been teaching in a seminary, and he was a vicar general of the, the diocese of Neondo in Western Rwanda. He was already a sort of little bit prominent clergy. Not well known, but I mean, yeah, he was a vicar general. He had written already, and he was very educated. And he decided to, to talk about it. That was his interesting. So in terms of life story, it's maybe we're going to see other papers during this conference, is the desire, and he used the term, the duty of memory. And, and Tando mentioned uh, Ricoeur. There's a lot in Ricoeur about the duty of memory in one of his books. The duty of memory, we have to remember. So all the book is about somebody who wants to testify. But also more than that. So part of the book is, is that. And I wish I had time to read quotes, but I don't have the time. I won't do it. I just speak briefly, just to intrigue you. And so you, one day you may, uh, I have more questions. Yeah, I just want to, to raise questions, basically. Um, now, <clears throat> the story of the document is 72 pages long. He says himself, he took notes during the genocide. And then he, the genocide came to an end. He went to Holland, and because he, he, he suffered from diabetes, he didn't come back to Rwanda. He spent a few years in, in Italy, and he wrote it there and published it there. So what happened during the genocide? Part of the book is the booklet of the book is about what happened. Um, <clears throat> historically in Rwanda, there are two main type of missionaries. There are the white fathers who were mostly Belgian and also French and other nationalities, and they were close to the regime which produced the genocide. They were, they were compromised, if you like. Not all of them, but most of them were compromised. And then there's another on the line, there was an indigenous bishop called Berigumami, ordained in 1952, and he was independent. And even though there was no, no missionaries, only uh, dancers and priests and, and, and that's not priest from various countries, but also local people like this one. So it's quite interesting. Now, that diocese is the only diocese which took a stand against the development of the genocide. Because the genocide happened in 1994, but there's been many massacres of Tutsi before. It, it, the tension grew gradually. And it was when, so the genocide there, the, 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 the perpetrator of genocide, they were very angry at the Catholic Church in Yundo because they did not follow the propaganda of the government. They did not, yeah, they were not extremists. And in that diocese alone, 32 priests were killed. Imagine, one diocese, not to mention the sisters and the deacons and the lay people, just one diocese, 32. And 12 survivors, including Jean Baptiste. 12 survivors. And Everything, most of it happened in two days, 7th, 8th, and 9th of April, right at the beginning. Uh, there's been massacres in the minor seminary, in the episcopal residence, in the cathedral, and around. And then a bit more massacres at the end of April, and occasional mass killings after in Niondo. I've been there many times. It's, by the way, it's the first 
church memorial of the genocide in Rwanda. As early as 1995, you can go there, there's a memorial in the cathedral. Very moving.